poor journalism these days in the establishment system. But a lot of my reporters just entered contests, did a great job, and I hired them, and they've developed and, and, and are getting better and better. It is a, I'm going to skip this network break coming up. It is a testament to humanity that all of us over time can develop. I was listening to that uh, song, Exercising This Morning, by Aerosmith, Dream On, I think it's the, the title. Everybody knows the song. But you've got to lose to learn how to win. And that's why the nanny state doesn't want you playing dodgeball, doesn't want you ever getting in a fist fight, don't want you ever falling off the roof, doesn't want you ever doing anything because they know the adversity will develop you and battle test you and make you stronger. Like I knew Joe Biggs would be a great reporter because of the tenacity he had to expose the murder of his friend, Mr. Hastings. And now he just gets better and better and he's only been here six, eight months. That's what I'm talking about. So today, before I get into all this news, I wanted to just talk about the fact that all of us can be journalists, all of us can post YouTube videos, all of us can write blogs about what we see and what we think, and it all has value in the end because it's just more people giving what they really believe perspective, and that ambient background of truth will topple 2 plus 2 equals 5, you didn't build your business, raising the debt ceiling doesn't raise the debt ceiling, um, your children aren't your children, we're not coming after your guns, just turn them in, don't run, we are your friends. We will overthrow the fraudulent paradigm the minute we start saying no, the minute we start disagreeing and saying you don't speak for me, the minute we start voting with our dollars to promote high quality products made in America, organic, the minute we start supporting true independent media that stands up for freedom. And that doesn't mean you even got to agree with everything a media outlet puts out. But if they consistently will break real news, tell the truth, stick their neck out, and tell it like it is, they deserve support. McClatchy puts out kind of a socialist drivel icing on a lot of what they do, but I respect them as a news agency out of Florida because they'll expose banks dealing drugs and banks running the aircraft and the CIA dealing drugs and torture squads and Obama's Obamacare uh, really being a banker bailout. They'll expose Obama being behind much of the banker bailout and getting it passed in the Senate. So as bad as McClatchy is in their overall worldview, they have enough integrity to not be like CNN or MSNBC that just vomit twisted disinformation 24-7. And occasionally CNN will tell the truth about police departments around the country running, you know, illegal checkpoints and asset forfeiture seizure. But they only did that to change state laws where you can't have asset forfeiture seizure. So the feds could pass a law where the police could become federalized and still get their money. So, see, you've also got to realize when the mainstream media does tell the truth, there's usually an ulterior motive to it. Like, yeah, there's a lot of police brutality and out-of-control bullies in, in, in the uniform in some areas. A lot of departments are trying to weed them out. Some departments want to become pure bully. It kind of goes one way or the other. There isn't a middle ground, as the Bible says. Lukewarm, that don't exist. It's either bad or it's good, generally, in that spectrum. But they're only telling you about that so the feds can come in that have been globalized and occupy this country. That's the only reason they're stirring all this up. And the American people instinctively get that. That's why they have an ABC News article. After NYC deaths, a surge of support for police. How about a surge of support for good police? Let's see, it becomes an us against them. Either you totally back the cops or you don't back them. The thin blue line. That's mindless and that creates corruption. And I don't support mindless support. Now, that said, I want to get to Paul Watson's report here in a moment. We're skipping this network break, uh, so station shouldn't be going over it. Our wonderful affiliates that you should support as well uh, during Christmas and the holiday season by spreading the word and supporting their local sponsors. That is so integral and so important. But before we go any further, let me tell you what else is coming up. 
Millions of Christians are in mourning this Christmas. War on Christians intensifies, Ron Paul Institute. ISIS is turning Christian churches into torture chambers where it forces believers to convert to Islam and funding its terror mission by sh selling stripped artifacts to Western collectors as well as selling women into sex slavery. Daily Mail, what a great group of people the Saudi Arabian Wahhabists are. We've also got another shooting, this time of an armed black teen in the St. Louis area. So riots kick off again in Ferguson. Video of that's up on Infowars.com. Cyber Command Investment ensures hackers targeting U.S. face retribution. She, oh, they're launching attacks and shut down North Korea now because they did the hack attack. The FBI said so. Actually, the FBI didn't say so. They had one release from the Justice Department saying the FBI thought some of it could have led back to North Korea. But now Sony and the FBI admit it was an inside job. That's now breaking. And let's go over that right now. Remember our article last Friday? NSA capable of false Sony hack blamed on North Korea. NSA hackers can easily frame another country. And that's the data that was given to the FBI. You can go into somebody's computer remotely and then run basically a zombie attack through their computer. We've been attacked many times. And then we track back to computers, and it's thousands of private computers from Japan to Australia uh, to Europe to the United States that are attacking Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. But you heard Paul Watson on the show and myself say over and over again, most of the smart money is pointed to inside job at Sony, probably by executives on purpose, but you got to put some meat in there, a few, you know, uh, dirt dishings uh, on some of the Hollywood stars to make folks bite. The hook's got to have a little bit of worm on it. Well, here is CBS News. Was FBI wrong on North Korea? Cybersecurity experts are questioning the FBI's claim that North Korea is responsible for the hack and the crippled Sony pictures. A senior vice president with cybersecurity firm Norse told CBS News his company has data that doubts the FBI findings. Sony was not just hacked. This is a company that was essentially nuked from the inside. And then here's another headline breaking. We can conclusively confirm North Korea was not behind hashtag Sony hack. That's out of Got News. So this is all coming out. Well, folks... Paul Watson has an article from days ago where the original FBI agents said it appeared to be an inside job. So that's what I mean. There's like two FBI's. You got the FBI that did its job, looked at it, said, looks like it happened from the inside. That gets shut down. The politicos over at Obama land, they get a hold of it. Let's play this clip first of Obama today in a press conference saying we can't have a dictator telling us what to do. Buddy. You have become a dictator on guns, on borders, on energy issues, on the military, with executive orders, like no other president in history. Jonathan Turley, big liberal, professor, constitutional law scholar, says you're three times worse than Bush. I don't agree with that. You're five times worse. And Bush was outrageously unconstitutional. Worst ever. When it came to just all-out executive power, unitary executive, Cheney claiming that the vice president was above the law and could do whatever he wanted and bigger than the president. I mean, just crazy talk. They could secretly arrest citizens if they wanted to. Obama then codified it into law under the NDAA 2011. So here is Obama in his press conference saying Sony did the right thing. Talk about hype. He's so, he doesn't even matter. No one's even listening to him now, so he's a champion of free speech. We can't let a dictator tell us what to do. When North Korea came out oh, six days ago and said they didn't do it, but that they would blow us up any minute. I mean, again, I'm not saying North Korea is good. They're horrible. The point is this is all a way to bring in the expansion of cybersecurity. Here's Obama. We cannot have a society in which some dictator someplace can start imposing censorship here in the United States. Because if somebody is able to intimidate folks out of releasing a satirical movie, imagine what they start doing when they see a documentary that they don't like, or news reports that they don't like. Um, 
All right, let's stop right there. And, and again, I saw it this morning. It was a press conference at 2 o'clock uh, Eastern yesterday. And the day before, he said Sony did the wrong thing. This is all scripted, wag the dog, just like the fake Bin Laden raid. I'm going to play Watson's report in the next segment. This is all totally scripted. And again, it's not arrogance when I say, we told you first it was probably an inside job, but not even by a disgruntled employee. There's always stuff getting leaked at Sony or any other big outfit from insiders that get disgruntled. They'll probably dig up some low-level person that leaks something, frame them for everything else. You can believe it. This whole thing was scripted. Sony goes along because it's basically the Japanese government owns Sony through one of its major mafias, and that's come out on record. It's like five families run Japan. One of the biggest owns Sony on record. So Japan does whatever it's told by the globalists. Remember, it got occupied. All their elites got let off for war crimes in 1945. The emperor got let off for running the biological weapons program, all of it. They do what the New World Order says. The joke is Sony stands for Standard Oil New York, but <laughs> kind of does, but really stands for Japanese Mafia. And they do hate uh, North Korea. North Korea hates them. North Korea has been firing nuke missiles without the nukes on top, you know, at, at Japan over their coast in, 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 in all sorts of menacing. Japan's in deep economic trouble, is militarizing right now, secretly has developed nuclear weapons. That's come out. You heard it here first. But the point is, that's all happening. And so they're gearing up for war with China and war with North Korea. They want to put the movie out, but the, bigger than a $200 million movie, they want the propaganda to demonize North Korea and to stir North Korea up as a PSYOP. That's what they get out of it. Then domestically, they get to try to pass more cybersecurity. They get to legitimize the war-making capability of cybersecurity, get to Hollywoodize it. Sony and others are pushing to get more pirating laws passed, SOPA and CISPA, to restrict everybody worldwide, not just in the U.S., because one of them is an international treaty, to restrict our free speech. You've got the Asian Pacific Partnership that WikiLeaks released one of the sections of that basically ends Internet freedom and brings us into Chinese-style net censorship. We've got Zuckerberg, who says his users are dumb effers at Facebook, meeting with the head of Chinese censorship two weeks ago and saying he now supports socialism. Notice communism is now socialism. We don't have communism, we have socialism. It's always billionaires supporting it because they're tax-exempt offshore. This is all happening, and now they're coming out and going, you know what, originally, we're going to show you this article coming up, the FBI said this was an inside job two weeks ago. They came in, they looked at it. It was so widespread, it was across the board, it was on secure networks, blocked with internal firewalls, and they said, this looks like an inside job. But that was only in a couple articles, CBS and ABC, and Paul Watson in his piece shows those. It's up on DrudgeReport.com. We'll repost his article from yesterday back to InfoWars.com. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, in everybody's face. The marketing scam, and it gets Obama back in the headlines, suddenly supporting free speech. We're going to have a heyday with that because it was the Obama administration that arrested the maker of the uh, anti-Muhammad film and blamed that on Benghazi when it had nothing to do with it. This is the group trying to censor the web, the internet, and talk radio. This is the group sicking the IRS on alternative media, conservative media, libertarian think tanks, conservative think tanks, veterans groups, pro-life groups, Christian groups, evangelical groups. They've got the Pentagon telling, you know, in manuals at Fort Hood, indicted Dinesh D'Souza, indicted all these other filmmakers. But we can't have dictators telling us what to do when there's an... It was confirmed in congressional documents yesterday that indeed the IRS had memos saying we're going to go after icky conservatives. I love how that... So they don't feel bad about ruining lives, arresting people, taking their bank accounts outside of law. They call it icky. This person I'm going to abuse and assault is icky. They even use non-threatening words when they crush people. Maybe if Nazis wore pink outfits and shot Jews in the head and called it icky, it'd be okay. If they had, like, you know, lisp in their voice with an NPR voice. Hi, this is all Nazis considered. I'm going to talk in a real soft voice and wear a pink uniform when I beat your baby's brains out. See how they do it? They're a bunch of sick, tyrannical, filthy, totalitarian scum suckers. We're on suckers. the march.
The Empire's on Merry the Merry Christmas. Run. Stay with us.